Hi there, this is Dr. Wallach. I'm just going to give you a quick overview of how to connect a microphone in the studio and get it recording into Logic. Uh, really what you want to start with and in this situation is pull out the mic cabinet, uh, the mic box here. You can go ahead and pull uh, out uh, one of these microphones here. We've got condensers, we've got dynamic microphones. Uh, you also want to make sure you have the corresponding clip on this side of the box. Okay. Uh, do make sure that your, mic, your clip fits the mic because uh, they do come in different sizes and they are specific to different microphones. We have a few that are just alligator kind of pinch clips, clips, almost what you'd find in like a, a chip clip kind of uh, situation where you could close up a bag basically, but you can use this for a variety of microphones, but don't force the microphone into the clip if it doesn't fit, that's the bottom line. Uh, there is one microphone that has a little bit of a special situation, the Samson CL8s. Uh, these actually uh, go with the shock mounts that you see here on the left hand side of this picture. Uh, what you do is you actually pick it up and you place it into the shock mount and you're going to have to... Um, Make sure it's level first, so make sure it's going straight up and down uh, into the shock mount, but you're actually going to have to twist it around like that in order to get it in uh, to the shock mount so that it's actually holding it in place. Uh, you don't have to twist it all the way uh, until it stops. You can just uh, twist it a few times and, and get it into place, into position. Uh, make sure the Samson logo is facing out because that's the, the business end of the microphone. That's the part you want to be singing into. Uh, what this does is basically isolate the microphone from any vibrations that are coming up through the floor from either shuffling your feet or just simply floor vibra vibrations by a car going by or whatever. Um, you want to grab a mic stand. Uh, do take note of the mic stand, how it actually is folded up and placed against the wall. Uh, try to get the mic stand back into the position that it was in. Uh, we do have a variety of boom stands and a number of floor stands now, uh, but make sure you fold it up and place it back in, the, in this area next to the mic cabinet and, and when you're done. Um, in the booth, you want to go ahead and take an XLR and you're going to connect it to uh, the little HOSA um, patch bay that you see at the bottom there. And you're, you'll see that it actually says mic and then there's numbers 1 through 8. Those are four microphones 1 through 8. You can actually patch them in there and uh, record up to eight different microphones into Logic um, just by patching it in there. Do take note of that number because you're going to need to know which number uh, you're patched into on the other side of things. You don't actually have to turn this on unless you're using the headphone playback and uh, I'll maybe talk about that in another uh, time. A couple things you're going to notice in the booth, we do have two gobos in here and they have two different sides. They have a soft side, a padded side, and then a reflective side, a hard side. Uh, the hard side is going to give it, make the room sound a little more live because sound's going to reflect off of that surface. Probably not going to add an echo, but uh, it, it's a little more short than an echo, but it will add a little more liveliness to the room if you face those out and it'll just, just because it's a reflective surface. As opposed to the soft side is going to be more absorb absorbent. Uh, these are good for when you have multiple things going on in the booth. You can actually use it to create some separ separation. They are kind of heavy though, so if you need help, uh, get help in terms of moving them. Okay. Um, the other thing you'll notice, there's actually some air vents at the side of the booth uh, on the wall uh, just to the right as you walk in. Uh, do take note of these because this actually will circulate air in and out of the room. Uh, now there's pretty quiet, the fans, uh, but they can, uh, you can actually hear them if you're recording some really uh, quiet material. So the way to turn these off, I'm sorry that there's not a switch for these, but if there's a uh, power strip that you'll find on the floor outside the booth, uh, just underneath the mic cabinets. The fans are plugged into this power strip, so you turn the power strip on and off in order to turn the fans on and off. So uh, if it's getting kind of hot, you want to turn the fans on. If it's uh, getting kind of noisy, you can go ahead, and turn the head, go ahead and turn the fans off. Okay. Back out at the workstation, you're going to find the 828 right here. That's this box that I have highlighted here. Uh, this is your main audio interface for the computer. So the computer talks to this box and manages all the audio inputs and outputs right from here. Uh, the Octopri, if you hear me referring to the Octopri, that's this silver box just beneath the 828, okay? And that's really where all of the patch coming, patches coming from the booth actually connect into the workstation at this point, basically. So number one in the booth actually connects to channel one here on the Octopri. Number two in the booth actually connects to channel two here on the Octopri. So you want to take note of, that's why I said take note of the number that you plug into, because that's the corresponding set of controls you're going to have here on the Octopri, okay? Next thing you want to do is actually create a track, and you can do that in Logic pretty easily. You should know how to do that. Uh, if you over here on the left, you can actually select your input. Input 15 is actually going to correspond to the first input in the booth, or the first Octopri channel. You can also change the output side here on the, on the right-hand side, as well as enabling input monitoring and record enabling the track right from the get-go, and then just press Create. Once you've got the track created, you can actually change the input here. Uh, again, 15 is going to be the first input in the booth, but you can 
check that sheet also that's at the workstation. You can enable input monitoring with the I and then record enable the track with the R and you should start seeing levels. Once you've got your track record enabled and you're happy that you're getting level in, uh, you can further refine your controls here and, and maybe uh, even help you get the right level that you want out of your um, input. Okay. Um, again, the different sections of this Octopri are broken up by what channel input is coming from the booth. Okay. So mic one is going into the little channel one set of controls here that I've highlighted, and you'll see the dotted lines kind of separate the different sets of controls here. But everything in that little section is controlling channel one of input. Okay. You want to start right here where it says level. Okay. That's the first thing you probably want to turn up from zero. Um, again, you've got plus uh, 60 dB is what it says here of uh, control. Okay. At zero, you're probably not going to get much level out of your microphone. So you want to turn this up to where you get a comfortable level. You also have a plus 48 V switch. Uh, the 48 V is 48 volts for phantom power. So if you've got a condenser microphone, you want to make sure you push that button so that phantom power is actually going down the line to your uh, microphone input. Okay. Um, so adjust the level to get the right level uh, of uh, from the microphone on the input side of things. Again, thinking about signal flow, you want to boost the level coming in. This is for your preamp uh, and 48 volts for adding phantom power. The other thing you want to focus on is the dynamic control. You do have a little compressor that's built into each one of these channels. That can help you quite a bit um, uh, getting some more gain out of your microphone uh, because if you add some compression into it, it will um, actually uh, keep it keep the level higher for longer as you're recording okay you can turn it off if you want to hear it just with the straight up level the flat um, preamp but most of the time you're going to want to turn this up I have found that most of the time for uh, vocal applications somewhere in between 12 o'clock and 2 o'clock can be uh, useful in terms of set a dynamic setting okay you have some other recording uh, some other options here uh, if you've got line or instrument level controls you can press these buttons you also have a phase reverser uh, that uh, that can um, reverse the phase on the microphone, which is handy for certain uh, recording applications. I'm not going to get into those at this point. Uh, and then this kind of little hill that's going up toward the right, that's actually a low pass, uh, or excuse me, a high pass filter. Uh, it's going to actually cut the low frequencies out. That's good if you've got some rumble in your microphone or some uh, some low frequency sounds that you you don't want in there. You can actually engage those. If you don't want any of these, just push them so that all the buttons are coming out. Okay. From there, it's just a matter of starting the record process in your session and logical count you off and uh, away you go. You're starting to record what's happening in the booth. And if you don't want the metronome, you can actually turn it off with the little metronome button here up on the right-hand side of the screen. Uh, right next to it is the 1, 2, 3, 4. That'll actually stop the count-in process that Logic gives you before it starts recording. Uh, and then when you're done, you go ahead and hit stop and you're ready to listen. As you're listening to the levels coming out of your logic session, you want to maybe control the level up or down on the output side of things. That's going to be this volume control knob here on the 828 again. Uh, again, it can help you change the level. Uh, it should be a good listening level at around negative nine, but you can go ahead and crank it up to about to, to zero uh, without any hurry, as long as someone hasn't messed with the gain on the back of the speakers. Again, you want to control your gain, output gain here, not at the speakers. Okay, um, and if you want to see what level is coming out, right over here, there's a level meter that says main on it. That's going to tell you what the the that's going to give you a visual feedback as far as what's coming out of the speakers. Okay. Uh, one other piece that's overlooked sometimes in the studio, if you've looked down at the lap board, uh, the lap drawer basically that's underneath the desk, there's this uh, device called the Alpha Track that actually gives you play, stop, rewind, uh, record uh, controls right there instead of physical instead of clicking with the mouse you can actually physically push some buttons. Uh, you also have one motorized fader that uh, corresponds to whatever track you have highlighted inside of Logic. That can be handy because you can actually just grab this thing and move it up and down to control your level of an individual track or the overall gain in Logic. But that's it. Uh, everything you know in order to connect a microphone and record in the sound studio.